Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another edition of On the Mic with Mike. I am your host, Mike Larkin, and joining me today is international superstar, one of my absolute favorites, I'm going to say right now, folks, May Young Classic, takes me right back to that time watching the Amazon herself do her thing. We got the one and only Miss Aisha Raymond on the show. Aisha, how you doing? Hey, how are you? I'm, I'm trying out new Samsung Buds and uh, Chromebook, so this is me giving a review on this camera. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's all good. It's a pleasure and a privilege. I got to say, first and foremost, I've seen a lot of your work. We're going to dive in from Japan, my goodness gracious, Denmark, all around the place. And of course, the Mae Young Classic. You have been around the way. That's the one for me to quote the great LL Cool J as far as an around the way girl. You've really been doing your thing and I got a lot of tons of respect for you. Thank you. Thank you very much. It means a lot. Thank you. You're very welcome. A lot of stuff has been going on in your world as well in the professional wrestling scene. We got to talk about this team with Miss Regina Rosenthal, the Ice Queen herself. My goodness gracious, you two are a formidable force. Yeah, I mean, I, I never met somebody that, that was just as imposing as I, and I, I give Miss Miss Regina her dues. She's a, she is quite a lady. <laughs> I look at it from a stance too as well. How many times have we seen, whether it be tag team and professional wrestling, where the enemy of my enemy is my friend, or we just have two friends that are just enemies who could go at it one on one and boom, they come together. It's magic. You know what I'm saying? You look at the original ECW mm -hmm. when you had guys like Flyboy Rocco Rock and Johnny Grunge as the public enemy. Opponents in Japan, boom, here we are in ECW. They're going crazy. We're dancing. It's fun. So it's that great element that really makes a great team, right? I mean, yeah, I mean, one of the things that attracted me to her so much as being in a team is the fact that we could do the dance very well. I mean, we've had, uh, what is it now? Two ratches over two different countries. And it's just like the moment we met, it was, it, it, it was, it was magical. It was great. <laughs> I think also I also respect the love about you two as well. I mean, you first of all, the big fam Vader thing in your social media from the big fam Vader, the great Vader, God rest his soul, rightfully deserved into the WWE Hall of Fame come WrestleMania weekend. I got to say, when it has people like Vader, when it has people like yourself, Miss Aisha Raymond, it's amazing to see someone with such a specimen, with such a brute force. It's that gravitational pull that really shines in through your work and your overall being. Oh no, oh no, thank you. I appreciate that very much. Um, <laughs> to even like one of the reasons why I adopted the name Big Fem Vader is because in Japan he was such a great legend and probably one of the utmost big men to do like almost high flying moves that you couldn't uh, kind of attach to other big men. Like, um, dangerously, I started doing the moonsault, so that was fun. <laughs> Hey, I mean, I'm going to say this right now. As long as you're not pulling the stand that Larry had hands and then get your eye Paul popped out like Vader, I think you're good. But no, I look at it from a stance to no, his that's, that's That's not happening. Right. Exactly. <laughs> that's not happening anytime soon. No. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I think with, with such a legendary career with the Big Bam Vader name and taking his talents to WCW and the WWF, and for, I'll be honest with you, as a pop culture nerdy kid himself, loving what he did on Boy Meets World, it's one of those things where you can tie in and correlate the pop culture world and the wrestling world, and he's just such an appeals to the masses, right? I mean, yeah, you, you say Boy Meets World, thank you. Have you seen Girl Meets World? Mm. Oh, okay, you see, you're going yeah. to spot on that. <laughs> No, all right. I saw it, and we're going to talk about this, <laughs> my fellow pop culture friend. It's one of those things. It's not the same. It is not the same, but it was great to see, like, your Corys, your Topangas, your Shans, your Minkuses, and you got to see Mr. Feeney and all them. It was great. But as far as everything else, no. Nah. <laughs> I'll be completely it, honest. It shouldn't have been made. It shouldn't have been done. They should have just left it and let it die. That was it. That was oh. all. Like, again, I respected that they want to try to do something to like this new generation, but nothing will beat like when Corey and Sean and they come in on Topanga and Sean with the whole underpants thing and so many great moments from the show, whether they're in their teen years, their adult years and their younger years, nothing can compare to what we saw in the 90s. That's true. Yeah, that can go for a lot of things we see today, to be fair. Okay. <laughs> and I mean, you you focus on like deeper relationships in Boy Meets World. You talk about Sean and Angela and that relationship from Corey and Topanga. There's a lot of stuff that's life lessons right there. And I think and it goes with professional wrestling as well. There's so much to take into back in the day when we didn't have social media. But now that we're in a social media age, so to speak, it's amazing just to see what transpires, right? Yeah, I mean, like you said, it's it's a completely different age where we receive a lot of information way too quickly. 
<laughs> I mean, it has its pros and cons. We get to, you know, really go on it as front as promoting ourselves and stuff like that. But at the same time, it's like, it's too much stress, man. It's too much drama, you know, that really comes fulfilled with it. Yeah, oh, that's true. I mean, we can we go back to the later days where we had to wait for review shows in the newspaper? I'd, I'd prefer that, to be fair. <laughs> Hey, I, I'm right there with you. And I mean, I also look at it from a stance too as well with what we had back in the day. And I'll say this right now is from the American side of things, when we had such UK talents and he's still doing his thing, like we got Craig David, we had women like Sonique back in the day doing her DJ thing, but the love it feels so good. It's that Euro pop style as well that really goes into it. But it's great to see like the music and the style from the international side of things, especially for professional wrestling and what we have now today. So it kind of mm-hmm. coincides a bit, right? Yeah, that's true. That is true. <laughs> hey, what's old is new again. And what's great about what we get to see with yourself, Miss Aisha Raymond, we talk about Regina Rosendahl and everything that meshes there as well. I would be amiss if I didn't talk about the Mae Young Classic because I remember seeing you come in. They highlighted so many amazing women, such as yourself, such as Renee Michelle, Candice LeRae, Dakota Kai, Tony Storm, Shayna Baszler, Kyrie Sane will be here all day. You were in such a crop of talent going into the Mae Young Classic. So let's talk about it. How did you feel going into it? You had a great match for Tony Storm. Just everything that came in. We got to see a great buildup of you, Miss Maisha Raymond, Miss Amazon. How was that experience for you? It was like, I, I say I'm a fan of Shawn Michaels. I'm a fan of Chris Jericho. I'm, I'm a fan of the boyhood dream. It was the, the, the girlhood dream come true. Like I got to stand in a setting with literally people that I had watched when I was growing up. Uh, people who had inspired me to do this um walking around the, the performance center seeing the dusty statue like I, it brought tears to my eyes it was just it it was it was really really it meant a lot to me because it was me hitting that that peak of my career at that time um Ryan about the same time I was losing my grandfather he was very very ill and he got to see me compete in the May Young Classic before he passed and it just it meant so much and it, it, it just everything after that was <laughs> as uh, was a lot to handle uh, it opened a lot of doors and opened a lot of ideas of things that i could do going forward and for me like i say with all you ladies for me it was the gravitational pull because like i said we get to see women like yourself and i've always been this and i love this and i think and i'll say this some americans are ignorant when it comes to you know overseas talent coming here but for me i'm like it's exposure and i think it's great because i think there's so many different territories like we look back in the days with the territories right bringing in these women such as yourself for such a prominent you know tournament may young one of the best ever and here you are talking about the dusty statue you're in the performance center here's all this amazing stuff from what we have in the Florida side of things, but you're also going against the great and Tony Storm to see where her career has transpired and really progressed. It's amazing just to see. And I'm going to say right now, that match was a banger. I really did enjoy that match you two had. Thank you. Thank you very much. And like I, um, like I said, it was, it was at that time, like it, it was the icing on the cake for me. And then again, for my grandfather to see it, for my family to see um, what I had spent years <laughs> giving up my life for it, it was like i said it brought tears to my eyes well let me tell you something right now and i don't mean to get a little emotional but your grandma your grandfather is just smiling down on you and shining you i'm sure he's very very proud of you so much love and one love to your family but it's Thank one of you. you're very welcome now i will say this as well it really has like really dawned on us just to see like how many years have passed by from the may young classic to the second one to the women's evolution paper that we got it's amazing to see just how women's wrestling has been right at the forefront and everybody's really feeling and noticing i mean we started with the likes of lita and trish and we had our jacklins back in the days and our sherry martell's medusa will be here all day bon Nakano. but it's amazing just to see the evolution pun intended of how women's wrestling such as yourself has really transformed and transmortified in today's professional wrestling i mean yeah you had uh, over here in britain we have a saying we we uh, went past the era of the fluffy boots and we went from the fluffy boots and the tassels to like athletes being in the ring and it's not an insulting term what it actually meant was there was one company where a, a lot of wrestlers used to get female wrestlers used to get their gear from and this gear the accessories was a pair of fluffy boots so we had that era but it is a really, really, really different time 
to to when I this even when I first started training, there was a time where every wrestler had red hair for no apparent reason. Um, every wrestler had black hair. Everybody every, everybody looked the same at one point in time. Um, now we have so many different varieties and so many different characters and so many different personalities and so many different backgrounds so many different disciplines of how people were trained and how people actually get into the ring and and different reasons as well um me myself uh, running res renegade wrestling like i'm seeing so many different people come from so many different walks of life that you hadn't seen in wrestling probably about five years ago so it, everything has opened up a lot especially in women's wrestling and I mean, you look at the days from when we had God Rest Her Soul China and we, what we saw later on with the Glamazon Beth Phoenix. I always looked there from a stance too as well. And I'll, I'll the American side of things, like you talk about the fluffy boots, which by the way, I love that saying now that made me smile because it's very, <laughs> I get it. But like for what we've always said, and I'll say this from an American point of view here is from women's wrestling, we come from back in the days and mind you, I mentioned Trish Stratus here where every almost WrestleMania starting from around 2005 to like 2008, it was always focused on the women's match being whoever was the cover of playboy now mind you that's great to have that sex appeal but it's like these women can wrestle like give me more here you know what i'm saying and we had companies like shimmer a uh, day price x promotion which we had daisy hayes sarah del rey and so many great people that came from shimmer and it's like god dang it man we're giving these women time and that's what a lot of us got to see as we again transitioned and transmortified over the years it's just to get that time you know what i'm saying and really showcase your talents on the skill and physical side of things yeah, I mean, like you said, it is that we have so many different platforms now as well. Everything is opening up European wise. Um, I used to work for, I used to work, I still work for them, but <laughs> a lot for um, GWF had their own women's promotion run by Vesna, who is a namesake in European women's wrestling alone. And there were so many avenues and so many doors now that weren't there before. Um, like I said, it, this really could be a good thing for women's wrestling in where it's not just one match on a card anymore. Now it's an entire show. <laughs> Now, what I love about it, too, is as well, and I think with the WWE Network and everything with the Peacock that's going on, I mean, we get ICW Fight Club. We get so many great from Progress and, and talents like that. I mean, Molly Spartan is one that really sticks out in my mind. It's amazing to see those women, and like you mentioned, like your promotion, ICW Progress. It's one of those things that sticks out, and it's great to see not just on the WWE Network, but people can, like, boom, right at our fingertips. I mean, you European wrestling – women's professional wrestling over in the overseas. I love it. And I think it's great to see, like, and we were talking about Denmark, my goodness gracious, Regina with Finland, just open up the variety. Man. Yeah. I mean, there is so much out there now. It's amazing. Like I spend most of my time traveling um, I, um, Europe most of the time. And there is so much different talent. There is so much different, uh, different everything everything is a different world in different places <laughs> from my experience of wrestling around the world hey, i get it and it, it's the culture side of things too and i'll be honest with you when a lot of the international talents come to the states i'm sure it's it's a culture shock for a lot of us and same with the states going to the international spots like japan and the uk what have you i look at it from a thing like life is an art form right we're all just here to apply our craft and paint our canvases so to speak so i mean if you look at it like that you're just applying your craft right yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, and I, I think what a lot of people tend to realize is that wrestling is an art form in itself. I mean, got Denzel Washington, right? I'll make another pop culture quote since we were talking about Boy Meets World and all this stuff. I'll make a movie quote here. Look at Training Day, right? Denzel Washington, oh my God, yeah. the scum, the narcotics. When he's talking about this shit ain't chess, the checkers, and it's chess, you know, this shit ain't chess, it's checkers. You know what I'm saying? It's chess, not checkers. It's chess. You're trying to find the mechanics and the technical side of things to really showcase and how to bring down an opponent and really put the pieces together in your match. You have to look at it like that, so to speak, like a little Denzel right there, man. Yeah, but it's almost, it's like you said, it's an art form and as I, well, it's a lifestyle. Yeah. Um, what people sometimes forget is you almost have to eat, sleep and breathe it. It's one of the reasons why I love Japan so much. The girls out there, or when it comes to the Joshi point of view, I can't speak for the guys because I only work in the Joshi world, it is their life from the moment they are training in the dojo. They eat, sleep, breathe, wrestling. They wake up in the morning, it's nothing but wrestling. It's wrestling and conditioning. And it's an art form and it's a lifestyle. If it's something that if you generally want to do this, you can't really go into it at 85%. Unfortunately, you have to do 100 or the cracks start to show. <laughs> 
1000 percent and that's what I, I respect the hell out of japan as well from i mean we've got rest of hanukkah more and we have like awesome kong and, and women like yourself the japanese side of things my god stiff as hell stiff as a brick shit house i gotta say and i've seen you as well we're gonna talk about you here man you have done some things whether it be power moves strikes kicks what have you my god dare i say madonna me to quote the italian side of me here my god woman like i said brute force and the brutality shows within your work but it's good it's very snug and i like your style <laughs> it's a different world out there like um with them you have to feel it and it, they have to feel it in order to to perform so it, like i said it's, it's a different world there i do many people have said that i do wrestle differently from when i'm in japan to when i'm here and i, I understand that um mainly because i don't want to go to jail uh. <laughs> <laughs> well okay like we were talking about the culture changes yeah, i can respect that because again japan i get it but it's one of those things too like you hear stories about japan and like every professional wrestler that's one of the dreams and one of the main dreams we have to wrestle in japan because i look at it from yep. as well new japan pro wrestling pro wrestling noah stardom if you will it's one of those things when it comes to japan it's a bucket list for professional wrestling it's like our own bucket list if you will and i think seeing that european style remember like alex shelley like before the Motor City Machine Guns, right? So he's coming and he's doing his thing in TNA, like 2005 era, right? And you're seeing him apply a lot of the European styles from the uppercuts and everything. And of course, William Regal and Finley. But you look at a guy like his size and his stature, it's amazing to see incorporated in the X Division when it's all about that aerial assault, high octane. Like you mix it up a little bit. I think we all need that variety, not just in performances, but in our overall repertoire besides companies, right? Yeah, I mean, even over like we speak of Japan, one of the things that they'd love to do is incorporate a lot of styles together into one big style. Um, a lot of companies in the Joshi community, especially the company that I work for, Seedling, they're very highly influenced by the luchadora style um, and the high speed style. And it's of course the very, very strong style, hence Nane Takahashi. Um, <laughs> but um, many, uh, it's literally just incorporating a lot of styles together and whether it be hand to hand combat um martial arts kickboxing um mma and luchador like european style they literally just mesh everything into one um and it's it to be fair i prefer seeing it that way even somebody who's was trained and started off with purely the british style i like seeing uh almost kind of a big schmoz of styles together to create this one big massive beautiful story in wrestling See, I like your style there because as you were doing the hand movements, it reminds you of like you're going to buffet, you get the smorgasbord. I like your style there. A little just like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> And I, I can respect that. It's one of those things too as well. You have to have a bit of a smorgasbord. You know, they say sometimes, you know, too much of something isn't all that good. Or it's not a, too much of anything is so good. But if you have that idea of professional and the ideology of bringing that forward, I think it's wonderful. And also going to the right school, which we'll get into you right now, woman, because Renegade Wrestling Dojo, you have your own dojo. You're a professional wrestler. You're going out there, applying your craft, but you're also giving back and you're teaching the upcoming next generation. So I got to ask you, Talk about Renegade Wrestling, Jojo. You're the trainer. You're training the next generation. We're bringing new prodigies and prodigets, so to speak, to professional wrestling. How is that for you on the training side of things and having your own dojo? Um, you know what? It's the first time I've been a coach. and I'm human. Sometimes <laughs> I struggle. No. <laughs> I am... Um... I, I always talk like one of my mentors in wrestling is Justin Richards and um, I always talk about the school and the dojo to him and one of the things that I always fear about is you know setting your little eggs free into that very big scary world of wrestling but um, Renegade Wrestling Dojo was purely created out of the ashes of Fierce Females Dojo um, my rebels, the ones who are with within the dojo itself, are um, the flag flyers for all inclusive wrestling. We have I, I preach no prejudice. I preach everybody is inclusive. I preach happiness in wrestling, and that's one of the things that I I wanted, especially after you know the wrestling world almost burned to the ground of uh, speaking out and everything that happened. We all just wanted to feel safe and happy. And that's kind of what I wanted. I, I wanted a place where there wasn't any boundaries um, 
or at least uh, I, I think that they can't be. I try my best. Um, but it's basically the most all-inclusive place I, I, in my head that I can think of. Um, I've seen so many different things when it comes to wrestling and how um, some people can be excluded from the most stupidest things. And um, realistically, that's one of the things that I don't want within my place. I just literally preach happiness within wrestling, I hope, please. <laughs> Positivity is key, but then I was about to say you actually kind of kind of stole it for me. I was going to say this is the wrestling business, so positivity is not that <laughs> key. But no, and sometimes thing, right, I, I understand. But it's like with the professional wrestling world, it's like have you seen professional wrestling Twitter? Because it's ridiculous. Because we live in a day and age where it's like we can't just enjoy professional wrestling. We have to argue of which company is better. It's like just enjoy what you enjoy and stop arguing. It's ridiculous. You know what I'm saying? Well, no, you're, you're arguing over something that's orchestrated. Like, it's like, it's first of all, I love the saying, it's not real. Like, <laughs> just take a moment, breathe, and remember, it's not real. Secondly, yes. just watch it, enjoy it. Like, I, one of the things that I used to hate the most when I was younger is when I told people I liked professional wrestling and they would go, oh, it's that fake stuff in it. And I'm like, well, would you think of it as like a magician's like like show you're going to a magic show do you legit want to see this magician saw a woman in half because it's not going to be as pretty as you think it is going to be that's also a work so do you walk up to the magician and go oh yeah by the way everything you're doing is a lie but i'm going to watch it anyway but it's still a lie <laughs> <laughs> that's a great analogy and that's the thing too i remember like when i was 10 years old and like your friends are looking at you like dude come on man you're the wrestling stuff like really come on you know exactly like you said the same verbiage you know it's fake right and here's the thing that that's that i always thought was funny about it because it's like okay so wwe in 2002 is the only game in town and then you know here comes tna impact wrestling ring of honor right so it's one of those things where it's just like all right Friends. Everybody loves Friends, right? Friends TV show. Matthew Perry will be here all day. One of the best 90 sitcoms. A lot of people like Friends. I'm like, okay, right? So Friends, that's not real. That's a TV show. The, okay, the Jersey Shore. The Jersey Shore was so popular. The crap that you see on that is some of the fakest crap that you'll ever see. It's just bonkers. It's people partying. You know what I'm saying? Staying out though. God knows whenever. But you watch the car crash television like that. So you're going to make fun of me for watching wrestling. You know what I'm saying? There's elements of the television side of things where it's like, all right, come on. You know what I'm saying? You're going to make fun of me. You're watching this. So it is what it is. Yeah. I mean, I accepted it a long time ago. It was, a, my, it was a saying from my grandfather and I take it to this day and I always say it to people and it makes them so angry. I'm like, anything involving money is fixed to some degree. That's wisdom. all you have to think about. Wisdom right there. <laughs> anything. If it involves money, somebody has made a rule somewhere. It's not as real as you think it is. Absolutely. No, that that's that's wisdom right there. That's actually a great analogy. I'm actually smiling that you said that. That's actually very, very true. <laughs> oh, well, here's the thing. They always talk about money talks, bullshit walks. But I mean, money does talk. You know what I'm saying? If you're making a living, make that do re me. To quote Akon and Wyclef, dollar, dollar bill, y'all. It happens. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now for you as well on the training side of things i think it's great just to see like what you've done and seeing this next generation come up like i'll be honest with you we have so many women like tony storm i mentioned jamie Hayter doing their thing now in aew and i mentioned women like molly spartan uh Ilya valkyrie like how amazing is it to see women like that doing aew nxt uk and really f getting that shine that they've deserved as well as yourself and really just that overall mm. flux how amazing is it to see them just in like the international talent coming stateside and working these various promotions it's nice because i get to see people that i i spoke with in locker rooms people that i consider friends like i get to open my my phone and see people speak saying like praises about them and praises about myself and praises about everybody like it's such a nice world to see that everything is so open and there's all there's not just one avenue anymore like you can do your thing in AEW you can do your thing in WE you can go to Japan you can be your thing in Europe you can literally travel the world you can go to Mexico like there's so many different avenues now it's it literally is mind-blowing there's so many different choices I'm 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 actually surprised that so many people are able to make a choice <laughs> And I got to say, one of the things I love, we were talking about the craft, the character. My God, first and foremost, Jamie Hayter is a badass, doing weird thing for Dr. Britt Baker and Reva on AEW. And another one, Molly Spartan is another one I see in ICW. Another one with that size and stature. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I look at women like Ia Valkyrie. 
like that character i remember seeing like the vignette for it, watching nxt uk and i'm like okay this is new this is different but i'm like you see a woman like her you see a woman like isla dawn it's something that's different you don't see that and i like different and we were talking about variety but it's cool it has that mystique to it and i think you need a lot of mystique to characters Oh, yeah. I mean, that's one of the things that the social media has kind of ruined. You can't really have that much of a mystique anymore if you're having, you know, random cupcake battles on Twitter. Um, but it's it's nice to see it actually happen and actually, like, work. But especially in this day and age where it is so difficult, where everything is so open. One thousand percent. But I think what's also very cool about it as well, and we're going to talk about this here, Miss Big Fem Vader, because, again, still love that social media handle. I'll say it till I'm blue in the face, but God dang, man, I love it. But it's great. And also the fact that Vader, and here's what I also love with Vader, besides the boy meets Ron, this is where it all coincides. Like if Vader, when Vader was on social media, God rest his soul, and he was having that feud with Will Ospreay. And I'm like, oh, man. So I'm just like, <laughs> and he was making a lot of valid points to Will Ospreay. And at the end of the day, he also, like, we were talking about the money, he got the payday and did his thing with Ospreay. It's one of those things when you see a man like Vader doing his thing on Raw or doing, like, going back to, like, the UK or what have you. It's one of those things where it puts a smile on your face because also on the social media front, it builds to great feuds. You know what I'm saying? That just one interaction can spark something that can accumulate money and it also brings a lot of people in and puts the butts in the seats. Yeah, it's true, but still. I know. <laughs> There's some pluses here. You I know. You know what I'm saying? Well, they talk about kayfabe isn't dead, and you know they got to. We always talk about kayfabe, but yeah, that's the problem. Everything ruins it. You know what I'm saying? The fingertips, if you will, the fingertips just ruin it. This is what ruined it. Bro. This right here. But no. Put it down. Put log it out. <laughs> Put it down and log out. <laughs> yeah, can we just go back in the days where I mean for God's sake when I was a kid just going back in the house going after school shooting hoops right I'm balling if you will but it's one of those things like we don't do that anymore we'll, we'll, then video games come into fruition and mind you there's some great video games but how much exercise are you really getting doing this you know what I'm saying well they told us not to go outside for two years so ah, the no, finish over <laughs> Well, we're going to go down that route. Okay. So, yeah. <laughs> so I think that went down with COVID. It's, it's also one of those things too, as well. The creative side of things where we can find like home workouts and stuff. And let me ask you over there, were you guys in the UK? How is the COVID situation looking? How y'all hanging in over there? Now we've just got stuff. Well, I live in Scotland, so oh, okay. um, I travel between Scotland and England. My family live in England. Yeah. Um, so things have just started opening up here now. Um, shows are happening, which is cool um travel is, is open like been to Denmark been to Austria in that time so everything is is it's a lot better <laughs> as long as I can fly I'm cool uh, <laughs> <laughs> as long as I can fly I'm cool we're, 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 as long as I fly I'm cool no, and I think what's cool, too, is everything's opening back up. And I think we always talk about how, like, this is the new normalcy, so to speak, within the world. It's the new normalcy. We got to get used to it, you know, but I also look at it from a stance, too. If it's people like you, Miss Aisha Raymond, going out there and just doing it, crying their crap, working, doing it up. It's one of those things that I think is very, very awesome. And it puts, like we talk about money and accumulating money. We're also getting to, you know, entertain some people, evoke some emotions. And you certainly evoke some emotions. Oh, I try my best. I, I, I do do weep inside when I like make little children cry. I feel bad, but you know, I try my best. I do. Right. Thank you. Right, hold on. Here. You want to talk about weeping and making children cry. Sasha Banks made Izzy cry. And it's one of the most <laughs> iconic things ever. So if you're going to make a child cry, you're doing your job, Aisha Raymond. You're doing your job. That's true. That's true. That's true. That's true. <laughs> that really did break my heart though man watching sasha make easy cry that did but i'm like okay man it's so good and well, well okay when the undertaker came out and the under you saw the kids fear when the undertaker came out 1990 oh. he's doing his job sure. yes oh, make it sure. all right you're evoking emotions. Like I said, I love it though. But I, I mean, I can understand from your side where you're just like, you know, you're you're a heel. You're this bad person. You know what? F everybody. This is me. Boom. Amazon coming in right away. You know, you're on the front. You're in the, you're on the forefront. But you know, I get it. I get it. You would think that, don't you? But for some reason, when I got to Scotland, I was a face and like I'd punch somebody in the face and they'd go, yay! Go, um... <laughs> I mean, I think it's... Therapy. <laughs> 
but at the same time, whether it's babyface or heel, if you, again, like with the with the Rock came in, right? And he was the face, and okay, he got a chance of die, Rocky die, because they didn't want to see smiling Rock with the with the hair and the poof, so to speak. You know what I'm saying? And then we get Rocky. Uh-huh. Die. Oh, I know. You got the die, Rocky die chance. I mean, you're, you're not getting die, Aisha die, for God's sake, right? No, not yet. No, okay. not yet. <laughs> Wait for him. <laughs> putting that into the universe. You're gonna start getting those chances there. My phone's already blowing up. Look, it's vibrating. <laughs> oh my goodness! But no, I think that's that's again that's what makes professional wrestling just that emotion and that I'm going to say right now with people who do have struggled as well, it does help them get through a lot of the bad times. So I got to say, you're being that inspiration for a lot of young women out there, my friend. Oh, thank you. So one of the things that I did like um, love was doing like I was raised and raised i was trained in kind of the the camp era so a lot of the all-star wrestling is your camp family shows and one of the things that i do love is doing those family shows and taking that nice smiley picture next to that kid when they hand you something to sign like i don't um, I, there's always a special place in my heart for those kind of shows <laughs> True. And I, I think what's great about it too is as well, that moment with the kid, like uh, it's one of those things, like I grew up in Long Island, New York, and there was a local wrestling uh, 15 minutes from my house, right? Like just getting to see that was just amazing. Cause again, you get to take the photo with a lot of people that are also from the area, but going to a WWE show and getting the photos or TNA, what have you at the time, it's one of those things where that's memories and memories to create. So, I mean, you're just creating some moments and moments memories and living in them. Right. Yeah, I mean, that's the greatest thing about life. It's just a, a lot of memories that you live. So it's it's good. <laughs> One thousand percent. And I'm going to tell you right now, I don't I wouldn't care if you were a face or here. You still got my support. I'll be cheering you on, man. Badassery at its finest. You know, that's why you got to look at it. No, you have to. I mean, I got how many belts now? I got four belts now. <laughs> Jeez Louise, man. Like I said, we, we no, talked my about- bag's so heavy. <laughs> Well, how is that? Okay, we're going to talk about this. How is that going through the airport with your belt collecting self? Um, it's the same thing. No, actually, to be fair, now Heathrow and Glasgow, usually I see the same security guards, so they're kind of just, they're fine. But every time I have to carry it through, like, I have to take it out, and it's like, what is this? And like, oh, oh it's a wrestling belt, and then they parade it around, like, do you need to show the world? Can you not just let me go? I did... <laughs> just does it have to be done like you can read it oh you've acknowledged what it was okay put it back in its case <sighs> well, well how do you yeah. think how do you think stone cold felt when he's walking through the airport with the broken skull championship everybody wants to see a belt and take a picture with the belt and they want to see the belt they have never seen anything such like this oh you got to change your belt it's wrestling you peak the curiosity factor man no, but this like it's mine. And and like remember, I'm Joshi trained. So if you touch somebody else's belt, it's bad luck. So they're all putting their dirty fingerprints all over my belt, and I've got like 17 million years of bad luck. Okay, true. All right, fair point. I can see it from your stance as well. See? <laughs> but you also have to look at it from a stance too, as well. It's like it's a championship belt. Like uh, kids grew up with that from the action figure side of things. They wore them, you know what I'm saying? It's that inner child is what it is. It's like that inner child. Sort of thing. It's true, but you know, I, I never had a belt when I was growing up. I never bought like a replica belt ever. Like, I, I never, I feel bad. I feel, I'm, I'm a bit sad. I've never had. Okay. Did you never had a, a replica belt. Did you have at least the action figures? No. I had I, I met the real stuff and I, I held the real ones, but I've never <laughs> you're just breaking. I waited until I could see the real people. <laughs> you're just breaking every wrestling fan's inner child right now. No action figures, no belts, nothing. Here's your dreams. <laughs> I can respect that though, but nothing. <laughs> The old respect of the Joshi trading is telling you that so shows. But, yeah, I mean, like, but no, you're also you're you're trying to get through airport security, and you're trying to get through there, and, and I can understand that. It's like just just, just don't touch my belt. I just I just want to make my mm-hmm. and go to my destination. You know what I'm saying? Mm, please. And oh, it's even worse when they they go for the belt, and then when they get to the gear, and I'm like, oh no, <laughs> just what's this? <laughs> but yeah <laughs> i have a love-hate relationship with security 
again, I guess it's totally, it's totally understandable. I mean, it's, it's like when CM Punk and Cole Cabana were talking about, you know, going over the Canadian border and they all had like, you know, their wrestling gear and they had like Sharpies and people are looking at them like sketched out. Like what are the Sharpies for? It's like to write, you know what I'm saying? We're going to a show, you know, something to fly, maybe something, something. So like, yeah, we've laced them with things. Our new weapon in the match. We're going to stick him in the eye with a Sharpie. That's what we're going to do. God. Yeah, no, I understand it. And and I also look at it from a stance too as well. We'll talk about the belts here. Like four titles. You're wrestling all over the world. It's the prominence right there that they see you, your face, pointing at it. Your face, Aisha Raymond, as the focal point of these promotions. And I think it's got to make you feel great. You're going all over the world collecting these belts. You're highly held in regard and prominence. I think that's amazing just to see your stature. I mean, yeah, I mean, shout out UPW, shout out SWE, shout out to Glam in Austria, you know, shout out to Premier Promotions, you know, it's, it's kind of weird to have my face, <laughs> have this face, this Warner Brothers face, um, yeah, as, as the pinnacle, so it's, I am the peak of the mountain, or I, I look down upon all the ones that might be chosen soon, I have a few. <laughs> endowed the confidence the swag i, I went like down <laughs> i might i might help with a fish hook maybe hey. <laughs> i'll put another reference out here god rest his soul you're like tom petty you're watching them take that free fall man they're free falling oh hmm. no i at least have to help one Okay. All right. Fair enough. See the generosity, even with her, just the generosity before I put you back down. Right? But again, it's, it's, it's what I do. It's, what? I give people hope. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you like that S club seven song. You're hope. You have to hope for the future, right? Yes, exactly. Mm-hmm. Oh. Uh, like, uh, all right. All right, well, we have to talk about this now, pop culture nerd. Okay. We had this, I'm going to say this right now, growing up in the nineties, okay. we had, like Euro Pop, we had the Spice Girls. We had like five, you know, talk about baby when the lights go out and slam dunk the funk. We had S Club 7, which was big because I remember getting up all in the weekend, watching S Club 7 in Miami and watching all that. That's part of the fan club. Oh, you see? Okay. I have- Gimmick blown now. <laughs> so <laughs> S Club 7 <laughs> was one of those acts. I remember buying it. So I grew up on Long Island. One of the big spots was The Wiz or like your local Best Buy, and they had the S Club 7 album there, and then they had the second one, which had, you know, Never Had a Dream Come True. Like, I'll say right now, I played the shit out of S Club Party, a little two in a million, a little Reach for the Stars, you know, a little bit of, you know, Bring It All Back Now, You're My Number One, We'll Be Here All Day. But those are the jams, man. Reach was my deadlift song the other day. I was just like, Harry. For the (laughs) stars. I like it. I like it a lot. But no, I think there was a lot of them. The second album doesn't get a lot of credit because a lot of people, when they instantly go to S Club 7, they think of S Club Party and the first S Club album, which also had, um. okay, so Disney, this is when Disney actually played music. So when Lizzie McGuire was on the Disney Channel, Hillary Duff show, right? One of the... <laughs> One of the episodes was about modeling, right? So the song that they used for that episode was Everybody Wants You by F Club 7. Because everybody wants you. Is everybody wants you. Yep. Like, they used that. Like, that's good times right there. And I mean, the Banga Boys, my God, coming Six Flags with the, you know. Oh, no. No? <laughs> my, my, my go-to song, you said Banga Boys, but my go-to song in, in, in Japan for karaoke is Aqua, Barbie Girl. That oh. is the go-to song. Oh, I can respect that. <laughs> that is the one. <laughs> <laughs> I have the visual image because I remember that album where it's just the blue water and all of them are standing in front of them and the Dom Lombardi. Let's yeah. go. Ah, 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 all right. I like it. Ah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we'll go on the opposite side of things because I'll be honest, my opposite side of things and what popped me because when Joe Hendry used to do a lot of his stuff on ICW with the Venga Boys comes up because of boom, 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 Jack Jester's in my room mm-hmm. and stuff. Like, that's great to, like, how do you not laugh at that? And Blue Abadia Badai, Eiffel 65, like incorporating music into wrestling. And people will say, oh, you know, people will poo poo on it. But I'm like, that's funny. It's entertaining. Because at the end of the day, the influx of pop culture and wrestling, it subsides and it stays and it coincides, right? Yeah. I mean, that's when wrestling was at its highest, when they had the schmoz mesh of pop culture i mean I, I, everybody watched that jerry springer episode oh yes 
<laughs> oh man, well the, the great one with Razor. It was great. Uh, right? Yeah. And Jerry It Springer, was great. It was great. <laughs> you had but what Jerry Springer had on like Razor Ramon. And I mean, well, the big one that we had in the States was Regis and Kathy Lee had all the wrestlers on it. So if you were on Regis and mm. Kathy Lee, you made it. And then the rock and wrestling connection with Cindy Lauper and Wendy Richter and Captain Lee Ogano will be here all day. Yeah. Oh my god, but it oh, you're gonna make me go down the rabbit hole. I know what I'm watching tonight. There you go. <laughs> hey man, <laughs> wrestling. That's how you have to look at it. You learn, you live and you learn. Yeah, that's the greatest thing about professional wrestling. No matter how long you've been in the game, you never stop learning in the wrestling business. That's true. That's very true. And now I know your go-to for karaoke now with your aqua self talking about Barbie girl over here. Now you, you get, I like that. I like your stuff. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Well, whether you're a Barbie girl, it's a or, good song. It is a good song, but I'm just saying, like, yeah. I mean, I'll be honest with you. A lot of people talk about one hit wonders, and you know, they poo poo on that too. But I'm like, it's a good one hit wonder, though. You know, mm. huh? true, true that. Now, I will say this: whether you're a Barbie girl, whether you're you know living in a Barbie world, whether you're an Amazon, whether you're just a big femme Vader, whether you're doing your thing, you are Miss Aisha Raymond, and you are one of the absolute best going today. And I'm going to say right now, the overture is here. Anytime you want to come back off for a round two, you're more than welcome. I really enjoyed this conversation today. No, thank you very much. I mean, I I love doing this. So I'll see you again soon. I share it. 1000%. And I think when we get to see a lot of great women in professional wrestling, if you're not checking out Aisha Raymond, if you're not checking out Renegade Wrestling Dojo, she's got a lot of stuff going on and she's got a lot of training to be done and a lot of craft to be applied and a lot of bodies to hit the floor to quote the great drowning pool. So Aisha Raymond, before we close this out, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, where we can follow you on all social medias, let us know. There we go. If you are of the Joshi community, it is Amazon, Aisha Raymond, the British Amazon, Amazon. Or you can just type in at Big Femme Vader into every social media platform and you will get this Warner Brothers, DC Universe, wrestling community, awesomeness of face. Not only that, but you can type in RW Dojo or Renegade Wrestling Dojo and you will see everything that we are doing. Well, hey, I will say this. You got a nice face. Do an accept great internal. Aisha, so before we do close this out as well, do you have any, I, Thank you. I always love asking this question when it comes to professional wrestling with your wisdom and your knowledge, what advice would you give to a lot of the talents and especially the women and the female talents coming up? What advice would you give Maisha? Um, just believe in yourself. No one can ever tell you no. Beautiful. Oh no, that's, that's a lie. Believe in yourself. The worst that they can tell you is no. That's what I mean. <laughs> beautifully said and i will say this before we close this out as i always say beauty strength and dominance the three key elements that make women the work of art that they are and aisha raymond i include you in those sentiments thank you so much for your time thank you no problem